Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is John Hammond, and welcome back to another Python programming tutorial. We're still looking at the URL lib module, and this time we're moving on to the URL retrieve function. So, this one's kind of cool because it allows us to download a file off the internet. It copies a network object denoted by a URL to a local file on our computer. It takes, obviously, the URL of the object or the data that we want, and the optional parameters are like a file name to save it as, a report hook function to deal with it and handle it as a network connection has been made and we're retrieving blocks and data and it data to pass to the actual address on the internet as like a post method or anything that we actually need to give it so the description in the documentation gives us this same kind of spiel uh, the second argument will specify the file location to copy it to uh, if it's not present the location will be a temporary file that's a, with a generated name. The third argument being the report hook is a hook function. It will establish network connection, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it takes three arguments, but I'm probably actually not even going to cover this or show it as an example because I honestly never really use it. Um, and data, again, is the uh, optional post information we can give to the web page that has to be encoded like you saw in URL open. Uh, the way this function works, though, it'll return a tuple, and the file name is going to be where the file is actually saved, local file where the object can be found, and headers. Actually, the information that we receive back to us in the info object that's actually returned by the URL open function that we just saw in the last tutorial, in the last video. So, Okay, something else to note is that URL retrieve, the function will actually raise an error, the content to short error, when it sees that the amount of data that was retrieved or was given to us is actually less than what we thought it would be. And uh, we test that by the content length header of the, uh, of the data and thing that we're actually downloading. So this might happen if the, data is, the download is interrupted or we don't actually finish downloading. It's interesting though because it's treated like a minimum value as a lower bound. If there's more to read, then the function will retrieve more all of the data, but if there's less data available, it'll freak out. You can still actually see the downloaded data if, for whatever reason, the download is stopped, but it's stored in the content attribute of the exception and the error that's raised. So if the content length header isn't actually available, if it's not supplied from the uh, network address, it doesn't have anything to compare it to, nothing to reference or use as a benchmark, so the function actually can't check the size of the day that it, it should expect. It'll just give you the file. In that case, you just kind of have to assume or hope that the download was successful. So all of this stuff is something to keep in mind. As you program, if you ever write a script that automates some download or something, it might be good to keep track of this exception or display it to the user or let them know that this could happen. Or you, of course, as a programmer, would uh, kind of set up handling if you see this error and just leave a message to the user and probably give them uh, what you actually retrieve in the content attribute of the error. So, all right, let's actually do this thing. Let's actually take a look at this function and use it now. I'm going to go to Google and just find some image to download. I'll, I'll say Python. Yeah, you saw some Pokemon Vietnamese crystal in there. You saw that. You saw that Google search. That's cool. Don't worry. <laughs> let's just download this. Uh, I'll fire it up into idle. URL lib, URL lib dot URL open. Oh, sorry, retrieve is a new one that we're looking at. It takes the URL, and I'm not going to save this as a variable. Actually, yeah, let's save it as an object. Let's just say uh, download. Downloaded. Downloaded equals this thing. And what's actually in that is, hey, this temporary file. Let's go check that out. That's got to be our file. Open up file handler, file manager. And hey, in my temporary directory, we've got this image, and that's exactly what I found on Google and wanted to download. So, nifty. What else have we got here? We can, of course, specify, again, a file name to save it to. Let's just say mine.png. And now in the tuple, it's actually in that directory. Actually, my, my home directory, that's where my idle shell is by default my local directory where I'm currently working. So let's go check that out under mine.jpg. And there it is. Sweet. All right, what else we got here? Again, I'm probably 
I'm not going to work with the report hook, and I don't have any data to show off to you guys. So, again, that's just a simple, simple demonstration of just downloading something with URL retrieve in the URL lib module. It saves it as a temporary file by default, but you can supply a uh, location for it. And you can actually work with the headers, like there's the instance, and we can actually take a look at what we saw with items and stuff like that to take a look at what it is that we're seeing there. All right, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. That's all I really wanted to show off in this one, and I'll see you again.